I can't understand what it's like to walk out the door or send my son out the door or my daughter and worry about just because they're black, they may not come back. I can't really, I, I, I can intellectually understand it, but I can't, I can't feel it. I just spent an hour or more with the, with the, the family as I got off the airplane. I had an opportunity to spend some time with Jacob on the phone. He's out of ICU. We spoke for about uh, 15 minutes. His brother and two sisters, his dad and his mom on the telephone. I've spoken to them a lot before, but we spent time together with my wife. And uh, he talked about how nothing was going to defeat him. How whether he walked again or not, he was not going to give up. We talked about a psalm in my ch our church, Father, based on the 23rd psalm. Uh, May he raise you up on eagle's wings and bear you on the breath of dawn until we and ho keep you in God, hold you in the palm of his hand until we meet again. Well, um, I think Alderman, what's been unleashed with a lot of people is they understand that um, fear doesn't solve problems. Only hope does. And if you, keep, if you give up hope, you might as well surrender. There's no real option. And as we talked, um, I listened to his mom. She was on the phone. She was in a different, she wasn't with Jacob. She was in the same location. And his, as I said, his dad, his uh, son, his brother, two sisters, and a family lawyer, two family lawyers were there. And um, what I came away with was the overwhelming sense of resilience and optimism that, uh, that they have about the kind of response they're getting. Her, his mom talked about, we asked, my wife asked to say a prayer, and, and his mom said a prayer. And she said, I'm praying for Jacob, and I'm praying for the policeman as well. I'm praying that things change.